Please be seated. Each week we come together for communion to remember Jesus' death and resurrection. And each week during this time, we also are asked to examine ourselves before we participate in communion because we know that what we are directed in 1 Corinthians 11.27, which tells us whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 28 and 29 go on to say, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. One commentator says, eating the bread and drinking the cup in an unworthy manner may mean to disregard the true meaning of the bread and the cup and forget the tremendous price our Savior paid for our salvation. And it may mean, or it may mean allowing that communion, a ceremony, to just become a dead and formal ritual or to come to the Lord's Supper with unconfessed sin. Therefore, it is crucial that we regard highly the price our Savior paid for our salvation. Not allowing this time to become a dead and formal ritual, but instead examining ourselves rightly before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for our heavenly advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous, whose death on the cross made propitiation for all our sins. We thank you for your word, which says that whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Please melt our hearts with your grace today. Please bring to mind the remembrance of the price Christ paid for our sin. Give us reverence for all that Jesus is. And it is in his name that we pray. Today we'll be looking at uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. If you do not have a Bible, there are men that uh, will be coming down the aisles that uh, would be happy to provide one for you. And if you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you. I chose Hebrews 12, 1 and 3 because along with remembering Christ, I want to encourage you and challenge you in your pursuit of holiness. Please read with me Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What is our overall focus in this passage? We see the main thought of these two passages at the end of verse 1. Let us run the race that is set before us. This is not just any race, but there's just one race. The race that believers are called to run. The race that Christ set before us. As you know, this race is a metaphor of uh, the Christian life. We enter the race at the point of salvation, and our finish line is being in the presence of Christ. We do not set the distance of this race, nor do we, do we define the purpose of our race. So how, how are we to run this race if we don't know how far we're running and, in every case, why we were running? 
Look back with me at verse 1. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, the author is referring of this great cloud of witnesses, which are listed in Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11 is considered or described as the faith chapter. It begins by describing what faith is, and the rest of the chapter represents the Old Testament saints that lived by faith. The Old Testament saints gained their approval of God through their faith. This great cloud of witnesses in Hebrews will most likely not witness our race, but they are examples and role models as to how we are to run the race. They persevered despite persecution and are commended in God's word for their faithfulness. Their underlying faith bears witnesses to the promises of God, urging us to follow their examples. They were steadfast, and they never gave up. So as the author states, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, running with endurance. And in, an encumbrance is something that will most likely slow us down. Extra weight. One of the audiences to whom the book of Hebrews was written was Jewish believers, and an encumbrance for them may have been the continued practice of rituals and ceremonies, legalism. For us today, it can be anything that causes us to sin or to be distracted in our focus on Jesus. We must continually rid ourselves of sin, thoughts, attitudes, and habits that hinder our efforts. How are we to run with endurance the race that is set before us? Fixing our eyes on ourselves or our efforts? No. God's word tells us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the faith, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Because Jesus perfectly finished the race, he is the focus of our lives. We look away from all the distractions and focus on him because he is already at the finish line. He is seated at the right hand of God and is interceding on our behalf. Another commentator says, the race set before us requires faith, stamina, commitment, and discipline in order to live faithfully. Seeing that the race of God set out for us is a lifelong marathon, we must commit ourselves to run to the end. A daily regimen of prayer, worship, reading God's word, and examining, examining our lives for hindrances will help. We must persevere by maintaining a Christ-like attitude even in the midst of trials, end quote. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you will win. Where is our hope to run this race so that we might win? Our hope is in Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. We are instructed to focus on him because he has perfectly finished the race. He is our ultimate model of faith. Jesus looked past the shame and the agony of the cross because of the promised joy of being seated at the right hand of God. If you are a believer and your hope is in Jesus, please take communion with us today. Please examine your heart for any unconfessed sin and remember to praise him for all he has done for you. If your hope is not in Jesus, please allow the bread and juice to pass you by. However, please don't miss this opportunity to ask God what is keeping you from having a relationship with him. 
if you have any questions of what it means to know him, please ask any of the elders after the service today. Men, come and please come in service. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. I'll be back in a few minutes to close this portion of our service. <laughs>